Okay. Hello. 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 Um, Sega just had their Sonic Central video, and wow, they they've had it for a few years, and it's been honestly pretty underwhelming. Nothing, honestly, nothing crazy. But I, I feel like it was their best one. They really delivered. They really just pulled it out. I mean, they they were like going like mobile game after mobile game after mobile game, and I know people, a lot of people, they don't care about mobile games. That's fine. But like the fact that they were dropping info trailer after trailer after trailer, sure, not a lot of the games people are super crazy about. They, they did some advertising for Sonic Dash and Sonic Forces Speed Battle. Yes, people play those games, but they're not the biggest fans of them. Um, I've, I've played my fair share of Sonic Dash and I've had my fun, but that was, oh my gosh, that was easily like 10 years ago at this point. The, the, the big one, okay, the, this, I'm, I'm a, ah, oh man, I'm just, I'm like so excited. Uh, I can't speak. But so 2024 is like the year of shadow and uh, Sega even called it the fearless year of shadow in this video. And it, it, a, lot of, a lot of people forget about it, but it all started with really uh, Sonic Prime, specifically season two, where Shadow had like a big focus in that season where he was like teaming up with Sonic and taking out different enemies, but most notably like the metal Sonic. But I, I don't remember what he was actually called. I forgot what he was called um, in Sonic Prime. But basically, it was like a version of Metal Sonic who couldn't stop talking and then reprogrammed to never talk. And he was like a pretty big threat. And it took both Sonic and Shadow to come out. And it was done really well. It was really cool to see Shadow written well. Sonic Prime itself is a pretty good show. But season one, easily the best. Season two just dragged on. But I would say easily the highlight was Shadow. You know, just seeing Shadow do Shadow things, skating around and punching and kicking and being like level headed and, and trying to go against Sonic. A lot of people would say that Sonic wasn't the best in Sonic Prime. I, I see it as like a different take. There's a different take on Sonic. Some people would say, oh, okay, well, actually, it's canon to the main series and it messes things up, but it doesn't make sense. It's not characteristically appropriate with Sonic as a character. For me, I would say, like, the big highlight was Shadow. Um, and I, I think a lot of people think that. And that's where this, like, year of Shadow started. It started with Sonic Prime Season 2. After that, like, we got the announcement, Sonic Movie 3 finished wrapping up. We got, like, a cool little teaser image, um, Shadow Shoes, and it was just, like, cool. Like, we had nothing to go off of. No trailer, no posters, no teasers or anything. So this was like, okay, this is nice. This is nice to have. And we got this. It's breadcrumbs. You know, we'll take anything we can get. And then after that, in February, I believe, we got the announcement of Sonic X Shadow Generations, which is really exciting for me because Sonic Generations is my favorite Sonic game. I had sort of not, I wouldn't say fallen out of Sonic, but just other things got in the way, right? Life and school and work and everything else. And then I was like, I, I want to get more Sonic games. I want to get back into the Sonic series. So I I got uh, I got Sonic Colors on DS. I got Sonic Colors on Wii. Eventually got Sonic Generations on PC. And, you know, <laughs> I guess, fun fact, um, that's the reason I got Steam was to get Sonic Generation. So I got it in 2015, played it, loved it. Just, I mean, oh. Even, even over 10 years later, Sonic Generations still looks beautiful. Is it as crazy as, you know, current PlayStation 5 games? No, it visually doesn't look that good, of course. This thing was running on a PS3 and Xbox 360, and Sonic X Shadow Generations running on PS5, you know, scales like 4K, I mean, it looks so beautiful. Like, there's a lot of little things, of course, it's upscaled to 4K, you have 60 frames per second, you have some visual touches and flourishes here and there. You put the two side by side, and you're like, wow. It, it was just so nice. It was so nice just to be like, oh my gosh. Like, cause I, I was thinking, you know, we're just gonna get Sonic Generations ported over. Look at Sonic Colors Ultimate. That game, it was like, oh, Sonic Colors. Colors Ultimate, have some quality of life features, fine, okay. And that game came out, and, um, not good. I'm sure they fixed all the issues but now, or at least most of them. I, I've heard they fixed some of them. I... I was expecting just Sonic Generations ported, there you go, 50, 60 bucks. Call it a day, Sega's done, they get their money. But then they showed off the shadow portion, and oh my goodness, I was just like, okay, this looks beautiful, just right off the bat. Wait, are we gonna be able to use shadows, chaos powers? What all is there to entail? And like, Black Doom coming back? Like, that was huge. Black Doom hasn't been a thing since Shadow 2005. That was 19 years ago. He looks good, he looks so good. Like, his, his modern design, right? The last time he was like, done and designed was on SD hardware for the like, GameCube and I think the PS2. The fact that like 
he's is this is the first time he's ever in HD and he looks beautiful like just the details he almost looks gross like all veiny and then like the bio lizards back which is exciting it's cool because like it's a shadow boss but it's less exciting I, I would say because like bio lizard was in the 3ds version which is weird because that's a shadow boss not a sonic boss but radical highway was also in sonic generations 3ds it's weird i don't get it i mean it's nostalgia but it's weird so bio lizard is less exciting but yeah uh uh really quick just sonic generations portion they're getting rid of lives they're adding the drop dash there's a little chow finding mission in the game so that's neat of course the game is upscaled it's just it, it, it's sonic generations what else is there to be said that hasn't been said it looks so good the cool thing is like with, with Sonic Shadow Generations is two different games. Sonic Generations is one game, Shadow Generations is another. And that's really cool because so many people were thinking, okay, we're just going to get, what, three levels for Shadow Generations? Bare bones story, no one cares, whatever, and move on, right? Just like Sonic Forces, we got Shadow DLC. It was like three levels. You could beat it in like 10 minutes and you're done. If that, maybe five. But I think it was like a 10 minute DLC and it was just like cash grabby. It's not, it's not cool, Sega. Don't do that again, please. I mean, it was nice to have Shadow playable. I never played Sonic. Sonic Forces, I refused to get that game after Classic Sonic was revealed. And then even more so when the Avatar character was revealed, I was really hoping this Sonic Forces was going to be Sonic Generations 2 without Classic Sonic. Like in terms of just gameplay, I just wanted like really good boost gameplay. Just a modern Sonic, full 3D Sonic X Shadow Generations is making that a possibility. I'm so excited for this game. Generations is my favorite Sonic game, as I said, but also the story is really shaping up to be Shadow the Hedgehog 2005 to a sequel to that game which is not anything I would have ever guessed. I would have never expected. I would have never thought that would have been possible. Because Shadow 05 was such a divisive game. I did not think we would get a sequel to it. And that's basically what we're doing. Like, Sonic X Shadow Generations just has me. So I, I need to pause. I have not been excited for a Sonic game since Sonic Generations. Sonic Generations was released in 2011. I got it four years later. Lost World, I was like, okay, this is interesting. But you just gutted everything you'd built up. You got rid of everything from Unleashed colors and generations and you're just restarting from scratch it looked interesting but i didn't want to support it just because they they were on a good track they were doing a good job at building up the fan base's trust and their own skills as developers i mean generations out of those three games unleashed colors and generations generations has the best level design i mean you could say oh unleashed okay sure sonic levels are all about replayability and unleashed definitely has that but they are extremely linear generations is linear as well however generations follows the level design and the mantra if you will of the original sonic game sonic the hedgehog 1991 the better you do the higher paths you take the worse you do, the lower path you take. Sonic Generations follows that throughout its runtime. The better you do as modern Sonic, the higher levels you will take. The worse, the longer you will take. Unleashed daytime stages are excellent. I enjoy playing them so much. They are really good and I wish we got more of them. But Generations, I feel, just nailed that classic feel in a modern sense. I really do. And with Sonic X Shadow Generations, oh wow. Uh, they're, they're taking that generation's design philosophy and just going crazy with it. getting all these branching paths we're getting like the higher levels right like the better you do the higher levels you go but also there's a bunch of branching paths and then you have chaos powers which allows you to take even more different paths and then you have the doom abilities these which is crazy like i like i i knew, I knew that was a thing in shadow 05 i played it i just never beat it okay black doom is a part of shadow and they just never did anything with it. And it was a shame. It really was. It was just so cool to be like, oh yeah, by the way, we're going to have Shadow's Doom DNA be a part of gameplay. That is the coolest thing Sonic Team could have ever done with Shadow. And I did not think they would ever do that. But they're like, oh yeah, no, we're going to make his DNA, his Doom alien powers be gameplay. It's such a cool thing. And you have like all these different abilities that you can use, like the, the Ma Doom Manta wing. I don't want to say it's cheesy. It sort of is. But like, it's so cool. Taking a concept from 19 years ago and incorporating it into a modern game. This has never been done before. It wasn't done in, I mean, oh my goodness. Sonic 06 was the last relevant game that Shadow was a part of. If you don't count Sonic Forces DLC, it's just crazy to me. And then like the bosses that they've shown off. Oh my gosh. Bio Lizard looks so good. Metal Overlord. Yes, please. He has not been seen since Sonic Heroes in 2003. And like, it makes sense, right? Because Shadow was a big part of Sonic Heroes. It's so exciting. It really is. And then oh, at the Sonic Central, it just like okay, the, the big thing that we were hoping for. Okay. And, and a lot of people have problems with 06. I love Sonic 06. 
Is it a bad game? Yes. Does it have plenty of problems? Yes. Do I agree with a lot of what people say about Sonic the Hedgehog 2006? Yes. I still love the game. Watched all the cutscenes back when I was a kid, um, back when the game came out, so I have nostalgia for it. I played most of Sonic 06 in 2023, and you know what? I'm I'm a very like optimistic, positive person, and I have a lot of patience. And knowing the reputation that Sonic 06 had, I went in with the worst like expectations. I was like, this game's gonna crash. I'm not gonna be able to play it. I'm just gonna have so many issues. And you know what? I had issues with it, but not nearly as bad as people said. Like I was expecting this game to crash like five times while I was playing it. It did not crash once. But hey, maybe that's just me. Um, I I love Sonic 06. Uh, mostly because there's just such a wide variety of characters you can play as. You have like nine playable characters. When's the last time a Sonic game let you play as nine playable characters? Sonic 06. No other Sonic game after that. Project 06 just really like catapulted my love for just the concept of it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Sonic 06 has a lot of problems, but man, one of the best things about it is its villain, Mephilus. And that was like the one thing people were like, we have Mephilus in Shadow Generations, please, because Mephilus is such a big part of Shadow's story. He is the main driving force. And we're like, can, can Shadow please fight Mephilus in Shadow Generations? Because like without Mephilus, the game doesn't feel complete. Honestly, it doesn't. And that would just be like so disappointing. It's like, oh, wow, you put so much time into the visuals, so much time into like the audio design and the music. And honestly, Kirk? The voice actor for Shadow, dude, is almost 70 years old, and he has never sounded better as Shadow. I mean, he's had a couple lines here and there. This is like the first time he's like truly been able to like delve into the character and really fit the role. And I'm I'm so used to I'm so used to the previous voice actors on Sonic Adventure 2, as well as Sonic Heroes and Sonic 06. Um, Sonic Adventure 2 was my first exposure to Sonic as a concept. I'd never heard of Sonic as a character, never heard of the series, never heard of a Sega, never heard of a Genesis, never heard of anything like that. I, I walked into a Fry's Electronics and I saw a GameCube demo kiosk. It said Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on the front and I played City Escape and that, that blew my mind as a kid. Um, so I, I got that game for Christmas and that was my first Sonic game and you know what? Not gonna lie, that, that game is a struggle. That game, that game has problems. It is hard. It is hard for me to play that game because there's uh, a lot of issues with it. But it introduced me to the Sonic series and of course Shadow, um, being that's the first game that he was in. Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic X Shadow Generations, like together, right, it means a lot to me. So of course, like all the music that they've been using in Sh Shadow Generations, it's hitting. It's hitting pretty hard. And then like just Shadow's concept, right, Sonic Two, that was my first Sonic game, so I've, I have nostalgia for him as a character. And then, of course, yeah, like I just again, uh, Mephilus, Mephilus being in the game is so nice. He looks incredible. Honestly, I still think he looks really good in Sonic 06. Like those cutscenes are still good, and especially because you can say, oh, the cutscenes are janky or whatever, but Mephilus just worked. He because like he has no mouth, so you could voice him however you want, and he was just creepy. So he could do have all these janky movements, and it just works partially because we have no other point of reference because Mephilus' first game was Sonic 06 and that was the last time he ever appeared if, if you don't count like mobile game stuff but Mephilus coming back in Sonic X Shadow Generations is incredible he looks incredible so excited I'm really really looking forward to the voice lines that he has um, that Mephilus has with Shadow and vice versa like how Shadow gonna react with Mephilus it's really cool because like what I've heard from the Bio Lizard fight is in the original SA2 fight, if I recall correctly, Shadow like mocks the Bio Lizard and he's like, oh, you're not the ultimate life form, I'm the ultimate life form. But then it was really cool in Sonic Adventure, Sonic has to battle Perfect Chaos in his super form and then jump to Sonic Generations. When he has to battle Perfect Chaos again, he doesn't need to super form because he's grown as a character, both like emotionally and physically. So he's just a much more capable fighter and a much more mature character. So he can take on Perfect Chaos without super form. And what I really like about Shadow Generations is when you fight him in Biolizard fight, he's all cocky and confident. But then when you fight him in Shadow Generations, he says something along the lines of, you poor creature, you've suffered enough. And like, if that isn't character development, it is such a small line, but coming from the original SA2 to Shadow Generations, that's good writing. 
that's good writing that's character development that's maturity it makes a nice parallel with the bio lizard fight from sonic adventure 2 to now shadow generation small stuff like that i think is really it helps really elevate the game and the story and lore of sonic and the series having mephiles back is really cool all the doom powers are really cool you know it, I, I like all the gameplay possibilities that we're going to be able to have and of course shadow being able to chaos snap having that animation is such a nice flourish and he's going to be able to use his chaos spears again to differentiate himself from Sonic, and then to top of that off, he has his Chaos Control to be able to take different routes. I think his Chaos Snap or his Chaos Control allows him to homing attack enemies like through almost through walls, through solid objects. There's a level in, I believe, the Space Colony arc where he can homing attack an enemy through a vent that he physically cannot pass, so he just warps through it. That is such a good idea. I'm so glad Sonic Team is doing something like that. It really opens up like gameplay possibilities as well as just level design and making things look interesting but still interactive I really like that you can tell this is running like current hardware i believe one of the transitions is you you go from the arc and it like does this crazy twisted dimension effect with black doom into radical highway and that is yes please that's so cool not restricting it to generation platform which was the ps3 which this type of stuff wasn't possible on ps3 so that's really again really neat again visuals this is the best looking sonic game Unleashed? Yeah, that looks nice. Generations looks, but no, Shadow Generations is the best looking Sonic game. It looks incredible. The visual, I mean, it really looks like they're putting a ton of time into the visuals and the animations and just everything visually. The lighting, the effects, everything looks beautiful. Sonic Shadow Generations just, it, again, has me so excited just because it's basically Shadow the Hedgehog 2, Sonic Generations 2, as well as Sonic Frontiers 2, being that the hub world isn't going to be 2D like Sonic's Generations hub world, but it's going to be a 3D open hub world where Shadow can run around and then get to his levels. And it really does feel like a mini Sonic Frontiers, where you have to go through this hub world and do these different little objectives to get to the main boost style levels. And then because it's Frontiers, right, you're going through chunks of levels from the past. Again, Shadow Generations, you're going through chunks of levels from the past. Shadow Generations just, it's so cool. It's, it's to me, to me, it's basically three games in one, right? It, it's basically Shadow the Hedgehog 2, Sonic Generations 2, and Sonic Frontiers 2 mashed into one game, and I couldn't be happier. Mephiles is in this game, Shadow's getting the respect he deserves, his voice actor is doing an excellent job, and this man is almost 70 years old, and he is killing it as Shadow. And then Black Doom is back after almost 20 years? And then, oh, I did not expect Maria and Gerald to actually be a part of the game. They're likely to be in the opening cutscene, and that's just incredible. Like, we actually get 3D models and renders of Maria and Gerald Robotnik in 2024, and from what we've seen, they look good, and I'm really glad that, like, maybe it could just be flashbacks. Okay, I thought it was just gonna be like, Shadow's doing whatever, who cares? And then Black Doom shows up, teleports him to the white world, and then that's it, and then we have a game. But it really looks like they're trying to push a story, and I really hope they do, because Sonic Generations didn't really have a story, and I really hope that Shadow Generations has some semblance of a story. I'm, I'm not looking for anything big. I'm not looking for, you know, a full, crazy content game like Shadow of the Hedgehog 2005. That was insane in terms of levels and, and story and hypotheticals and stuff like that. I just, I don't think so. But something better than Sonic Generations would be nice. And then, of course, we have the Dark Beginnings animation. Visuals look excellent. They look beautiful. The animation studio is Gigex. Who did the Rise of the TMNT? This miniseries animation looks beautiful. The music that they've chosen is really good. But the big thing I was not expecting, and the big thing I'm super happy to see, was Rouge and Omega are in this animation. That we get this jumping off point before jumping into Shadow Generation. We are getting this three part miniseries called Dark Beginnings, and it's going to deal with Shadow, Emerald, Maria, Gerald. And then we're getting Rouge and Omega too, okay. But the way I see it is Rouge and Omega, it's gonna be like an after the fact. The Gerald and Maria content is going to be more of a flashback. I really like Team Dark. They haven't really been relevant since 2006. Omega and Rouge were in Sonic Forces in 2017. I didn't play it, but from what I've heard, they weren't that relevant in the game. Where they really felt like together and as a true group where they actually did something relevant and important was Sonic 06. So just 
having them in like this mini short animation is a big deal. I'm, I'm really excited for it. And the episode drops today on September 25th, 2024. That's so cool. And then each episode is going to release a week after. So total of three weeks. So we get the whole prologue animation. So nice. Really excited for it. And then, of course, the year of Shadow is going to end with the movie Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Shadow looks incredible. He was so many people's like fan casting. If anyone's going to voice Shadow, it's going to be Keanu. I know people had other wishes and, and desires for Shadow's voice, but Keanu was mine, and I'm really happy that he is voicing the character. Sounds really good. Animation looks incredible. Shadow's design looks incredible. The visuals, I mean, the air shoes. You can actually like fly with the air shoes. That's crazy. I mean, it's just like Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles just visually look better. Higher budget, better animation. They look better than in Sonic Movie 2. They look so good. Sonic Movie 3, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is my most anticipated movie ever. I've never been more excited for a movie in my life. I love me some Pokemon movies. I really like the Mario movie. There's there's a lot of movies that I've been excited for, but truly legitimately excited to a movie I love. And I do not use that word often. I don't love very many things. I don't like putting that word. I don't like throwing that word out there. Okay. I just don't. I feel it loses its meaning, but I love Sonic movie two and Sonic movie three. I don't think there's any shadow of a doubt that Sonic movie three will be the best Sonic movie. Sonic movie one. It was a good safe story. It needed to be. Sonic Movie 2 embraced the games and just fan serviced the heck out of the audience. And we got so many cool moments. Knuckles got all the respect he deserved and was one of the best incarnations of the character, period. And then now Shadow is going to have his own movie. Shadow is going to have the most respect he's gotten since, well, I mean, there was Sonic Prime. Sonic Prime, he did, he did well. He was good in Sonic Prime. But again, like Sonic 06. So everything goes back to Sonic 06. Shadow's best interpretation is probably Sonic 06, if not Sonic Adventure 2, which Sonic X Shadow Generations is going to embrace both Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic 06. Again, like Sonic Movie 3, they brought back his bike. That is incredible. Like, I've wanted two things from Sonic Movie 3. I wanted a reference with a motorcycle and just, man, they're going all out with like the bike. Like he's probably going to steal the bike. It's Jason Sonic with the bike and then he's jumping off of the bike thousands of feet in the air. That is so raw. And I, that's, oh my gosh, like it's so edgy, but it's so good. And the only other thing that I want from Sonic Movie 3 for Shadow is a gun. If he doesn't hold a gun, I want him to reference a gun or something. Uh, maybe he like looks at it weird or whatever and says, oh, I'm too good for that. I don't know. I don't care. I just want some reference with a gun with Shadow. Everything about the movie looks great. I have nothing to complain about. There's already references in the movie like with the motorcycle and then Sonic jumping out of a helicopter like in SA2. This movie looks excellent. I am so excited for this movie. I'm so excited for Sonic X Shadow Generations. Oh, that's not even to mention, I mean, a bunch of merchandise that got announced within the last couple months and then uh, yesterday being the 24th. But like my, my favorite thing really is like the Legos. I, I've I've been in a Lego kick lately, and I, I bought a bunch of Lego pieces to actually put together, um, with some help online, to put together a, uh, a custom Omega. So I've really been in the Lego mood the last couple months, and, and Sonic as well. It's just been like really crazy. And of course, they announced two new Lego sets. One is... it's fine. The other one though, oh my gosh. We are getting a Bio Lizard Lego set. We're getting a Bio Lizard Lego set with Supersonic, which, okay, that's expected. I mean, we got Supersonic in one of the previous sets, and now for the first time, we've gotten Super Shadow. Yes, please. Yes, please. We are getting Live and Learn the Lego set. Bio Lizard with Supersonic, Super Shadow. It's gonna be $45 USD. I'm buying this 100%. I never thought we would get a Bio Lizard Lego set. Like what? And then it's gonna have both Supersonic and Super Shadow. I'm I'm done. Like I, I bought it. I'm done. I'm sold. Um, it's coming out sometime in January 2025. I I mean I already bought. I I went on Bricklink and I bought an individual Rouge Lego figure because Team Dark. And then I bought the Shadow the Hedgehog Dark Rider motorcycle set. I just need to pick that up from a friend of mine. And then I will have basically Team Dark. But then, yeah, the, oh, the Bio Lizard Lego set is just crazy to me. I'm losing it. Oh, and then, of course, I'm rambling on at this point. But Sonic X Shadow Generations has a digital deluxe version, which I'm going to purchase the deluxe upgrade because I want the physical version of the game. One of the things was there was going to be an exclusive, an extra level. 
for the digital deluxe version, and we don't know what it was. Outside of the Sonic Central presentation on the PlayStation YouTube channel, it showed what that exclusive level is going to be. It is going to be Shadow the Hedgehog modeled after his movie version, voiced by Keanu Reeves, which is so cool, and the level is going to be taking heavy inspiration from Sonic 3 the movie, which is such a cool idea, a nice cross promotion. I love it. I didn't think they would do that. And to top it all off, the cherry on top, Shadow's being voiced by Keanu. And I'm really curious, and I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping that the Sonic movie 3 model can be used in the main game. I don't see why not. I mean, there's already going to be the Terios skin, which is really cool. They're actually getting a Terios skin in this game because the Terios artwork was the last concept of Shadow before we got the finalized design that we know and love today. So the fact that like we're actually getting that in the game too, on top of like two other skins being Sonic Jam, Classic Sonic, Sonic Adventure 1 for Modern Sonic, on top of Terios skin for Shadow, and then the cherry on top would be the movie Sonic, voiced by Keanu Reeves. I mean, like what, what else could they do? What else could they do to make this game incredible? Biolizard, Memphis, Terios skin, Keanu voice seeing the Sonic movie model, Kingdom Valley, we're getting Radical Highway and Space Colony Arc and all this really, really cool locations and characters. Maria and Gerald are actually going to be characters in the game um, in terms of like story, not just in the prologue animation. I mean, there's so much going for this game visually, audibly, gameplay wise. People said the game controls fine. People said it's a nice mix between forces and frontiers, if not forces and generations, which, hey, you know what, if Sonic fans say game trolls well, we're in good hands. Like, this this game easily has potential to be one of the best Sonic games, period. And that doesn't even factor in that it's just coming bundled with Sonic Generations, like running at 4K 60fps with some quality of life features. Sonic Generations was the last Sonic game I was excited for, until Sonic Generations. <laughs> I just think that's funny. Sonic Generations was the last Sonic game I was excited for until Sonic Generations gets ported over to modern consoles with sh all the Shadow content. So it's, it's super exciting. I'm really excited. The Year of Shadow has just been incredible with Sonic Prime, the trailer for the Sonic 3 movie, and then we get Shadow Generations. We're getting a Shadow of the Hedgehog manga on top of the prologue animation, on top of all of the merchandise. There is just so much Shadow content this year on top of all the Legos. It really is incredible just to be a Sonic fan. And, and I, I know some people are like, oh, it's a lot of Shadow. It's probably too much Shadow. No, we cannot get enough Shadow. We have been in enough of a Shadow drought. We need Shadow. Oh, we are exactly one month away from Sonic X Shadow Generations and less than three months away from Sonic the Hedgehog Movie 3. We got that Sonic Movie 3 poster with Shadow riding his Dark Rider, doing the Akira slide in the city, which has a similar color scheme to the Shadow 05 poster with him holding the gun. There's so much stuff this year regarding Shadow. I really hope that Sega and Sonic team can keep this momentum up. Here's to Shadow Generations being excellent, and here's to the roller coaster and the ride that will be Sonic the Hedgehog Movie 3. Honestly, thank you Jeff Fowler for the Sonic 3 movie. Thank you Sonic team and for Sonic X Shadow Generations giving the character the love he deserves. Thank you. Thank you so much.